So let's let's jump right into this because you can see we're going to break this into two segments. We're going to do the pros and cons of each. Let's start off with employment because that's the path that's probably going to capture capture the majority of the people out there. Yeah, and so the number one, I would say, most significant benefit when it comes to being an employee is that generally speaking, you have more security than an entrepreneur. You have a boss or you work for a well-established business that has already proved viability. At the end of the day, the buck doesn't necessarily start at stop at you. It stops at someone else in your organization. So with that, there's a safety net. There's some security that's there that may not necessarily be the same when it comes to entrepreneurship. Another benefit that comes from being an employee, and I think this actually even benefits aspiring entrepreneurs mm-hmm. who at least have to start off as an employee first is that you get valuable the valuable resource of experience sure. and actually building mastery and a skill set mm-hmm. that is one thing that troubles me about sometimes when I see content on the me- on the social media where people right out of the gate whether they're graduating college or whatever they don't actually lean into this part of getting a mentor working for somebody and developing mastery of something a skill that's very valuable I'm amazed all the time Brian we go to conferences and we'll see tons of people that are financial coaches. And I'll be like, oh, great. That's awesome. You're a financial coach. Tell me your background. I'm like, oh, I just like, uh, I like finance. And yeah. I, well, well, what have you done? Like, what have, you're, you're how, get some hate how have on you that. coached? So like, well, like, what are the things that you have participated in? That's a spicy in? take. You're going to get some I'm just heat. saying, I think now, if you've gone through courses and you've gone through curriculum and you've had some sort of training, that makes a lot of sense. Or if you have built up some level of financial success yourself, that makes sense. If you just came right out of college and your very first stop is to financially coach people, I would argue perhaps you haven't developed the skill set or the experience necessary to put you in that position. You di- you, you disagree with that? You want to? Like, no, no. Is that a bad I, I just, take? I just is think that a you, hot you know take? me. I'm a, it's, it's it's not a hot take. It's actually a very accurate take, but it's just it's got a little sizzle in it. All a little right, sizzle, I'll take that. A little sizzle, a little spicy. Let me tell you another benefit when it comes to traditional employment. Uh, most likely with most jobs, your income is stable, which is great for planning if you have big life goal changes. When you're an entrepreneur, it's not uncommon that what you eat is what you kill. And so some months you're flush and some months you're bust. When it comes to employment, unless you're in like a commission-based or high sales type position, you likely have a more stable cash flow, which makes it easy to tackle, especially some of the big life transitions that happen early in life. Oh yeah. Anybody who's ever tried to buy a house, I mean, when you when you tell them you have a W-2, the, the lender like is like, oh, they like it. How long have you been working at that job? <laughs> oh, man, this is going to be great. However, you tell them you're self-employed. Even if you're self-employed with a decent income, they're like, ooh, ooh, I might need to see a few extra years yep. to make sure you really make that on a consistent level. They kind of treat you as a completely different person. And that's something that it, to, to be mindful, it is definitely easier on some of those big life transitions if you have the stability and the paycheck that's coming in. Another uh, big benefit of employment that a lot of people don't think about, but we've seen this in practice, is that it allows you to to focus on being paid for the things that you are actually good at. What you'll find is when you come into entrepreneurship, you're going to have to wear a whole lot of hats. And while your thing may be selling doodads, as a doodad seller, you've also got to be really good at HR. you got to be really good at payroll. you got to be really good at bookkeeping. You have to wear a thousand different hats. When you are an employee, it allows you to laser focus on a specific job responsibility that you can excel at. I often think, you know, we've done all the different personality types that create wealth. Mm -hmm. And there's a type, the virtuoso, somebody who does something very distinct, Mm -hmm. very talented. Those people, I think, in the right setup, they're so good and so specialized They are great at potentially being employees, but a lot of times when I work with these people and they're on the entrepreneur side, they are hot messes. And and maybe I shouldn't say that out loud. But it's true. But it is. I mean, you look at their books or you start talking about retirement funding and setting up, you know, and plans that require annual compliance. And like, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm good at this. Let me do what I'm good at because that's what I'm like. I'm like, you know, what you're describing, you either need to find a great CFO. Yep. Or you need to go work for somebody that unleashes you and takes all this other specialized. Because I can tell you as an entrepreneur, I do a lot of, and you do as well, mm-hmm. we are the um, flex people. I mean, it's <laughs> there's no, it's not my job when you own the That's company. That's right. That's exactly right. Another big benefit of being an employee for a traditional employer is that being part of something established 
has some automatic recognition with it. I mean, think about the people you meet when they work for a large corporation, like an Apple or a Google or a Tesla or a fill in the blank. Whereas in your experience, Brian, being an entrepreneur, maybe it wasn't quite the same level of recognition. Well, I know. I, I worked for a prestigious firm before I started my first company. And I remember a, a, a cohort that we were really close, same level when I left the firm. You know, it was like a, a two or three years later after I'd left to go start my first company, he got recognized by, you know, the the who's who mm-hmm. of wealth managers and financial planners. I couldn't even have sniffed on that list because I was three years into my brand mm-hmm. new endeavor and he looked like he was going places in this very established brand. And then to, to get what you're talking about, it, there was it happened more than once that I would tell people I had just started my own company and they're like, oh, I've got a friend that's unemployed too. <laughs> and they really, they, they, they thought, and I get it. Cause there are some people, I even have some success stories where people were laid off and they started an endeavor because of their inability to go replace the job mm-hmm. that they had been fired from. But it's still, it was a little disheartening to hear people say, you know, Hey, I, I feel for you. I'm sorry. You're unemployed while, while you're doing this. When I was telling them, no, I, I, I actually voluntarily chose to go this path. No, no, seriously. I'm not <laughs> unemployed. I love it. And then here's the last benefit. That a lot of people don't realize until they get on the other side of this is that as a traditional employee, you're going to pay less in payroll taxes, right? So we all have to pay a portion of Social Security and a portion of Medicare when we earn income. Well, when you are an employee, you pay for half of it and your employer pays for the other half of it. When you are self-employed, when you are the employer yourself, you get the benefit of paying both sides of it. So there is a chance as an employee, you likely will pay less in taxes and you'll also have less compliance headaches to make sure all the right forms are filed and all the right taxes are accounted for each year when you do your annual compliance. Exactly. Because, I mean, the less compliance is a real thing. You get that W-2, you know the withholdings were done Mm -hmm. for you. It's all taken care of. Your health insurance is likely all deducted and set up. When you go the other way with it, self-employed, a lot more headaches there that come with with the paying taxes and just keeping the Uncle Sam, our favorite taxing uncle, happy. All right, Brad, so we've talked about the benefits of employment. Let's talk about some of the downsides now. Now, this first one I think is really interesting, and I know this one is like specific as you think about your story, but uh, as an employee, it's likely your schedule's not as flexible as you would like for it to be. And so what you have to do is you have to determine what are the things and areas that I will prioritize and what are the opportunity costs of those? If I want to focus on X, I've got to give up Y to be able to do that. As an employee, you're often faced with those decisions. Yeah, I remember, and I shared this. This is one of those points of clarity that I got is that when my father was sick, and um, my employer was great in the fact they let me go and visit my father in the hospital but then when it got to the point that he actually passed away, mm-hmm. I only got to take a, a day off of work because mm-hmm. we just had a lot of stuff going on. And that was one of those things where I look back with some regret on you know those life decisions. And that actually it made me think about and, and ponder after my father passed away. You know, I had a great father in the fact that he came to the plays I was in or the tennis matches I played in. And I was on a path where I was not going to get to do any of that mm-hmm. stuff because I didn't really control – my schedule. So that's something um, I get it when you are, you know, hopefully if you can work for an employer that um, gives you the flexibility to live your, your best version with them, that's, it doesn't have to be a downside, but for a lot of people, it is one of those things Mm -hmm. where, and that's actually something when you're trying to figure out, are you an independent contractor or are you an employee? One of the first questions the IRS will ask you is, Hey, does your employer have the ability to tell you when and where you have to Mm. be? And if the answer is yes, then you're an employee. You're not an independent contractor. So owning your time is just a little different when you're an employee. Uh, Another downside of being a traditional employee is that in reality, your salary and earnings may be more limited, right? There may be a cap in terms of what you can earn, or there may be a pace at which you will be able to increase your income, but no faster than that. Uh, With entrepreneurship, that may or may not be the case. But as an employee, you likely don't get to control those decisions. So I'd argue that's a downside of traditional employment. We also put in, and I have an experience here on this, is you have less control over what you do and how you Mm -hmm. do it. Um, There's a reason there's movies uh, that are cult classics like Office Space or, you know, Horrible Bosses, (laughs) you know, and other things like that is because, you know, sometimes you get an employment situation where you have horrible people. People that are above you, and you're kind of at their will, and that and that can be tough when yep. you don't have that control. Yep. 